Hey guys, welcome back. With the Flood being a constant threat in the Halo universe, whether it be from containment breaches or full-blown outbreaks, the Mjolnir platform used by Spartans has had to adapt over the years to this biological threat. So today, we are looking at all of the armors from Halo 3 to Halo 5 worn by Spartans, both intentionally and also unintentionally designed to bring an end to the parasite. Before we start, I just want to quickly let you all know about my Twitch channel. So recently, I've been streaming over on twitch.tv slash hiddenxperia pretty much every day. So definitely go and check it out, drop it a follow, and tune into my next live stream, maybe. So, let's begin with the only piece from Halo 3. The first element of Spartan armor that is very likely used against the Flood is one that's pretty damn iconic, the Katana. Now, for the record, we don't know for 100% sure if the katana being used by Spartans is canon, but if it is, we can very likely assume that it would be used against the Flood. A blade as sharp as a katana, combined with the raw strength of a Spartan, enhanced by Mjolnir armor, would make slicing through the rotten flesh of Flood forms painstakingly easy. Considering that katanas are commonly used against more resilient forms of zombies in other gaming universes, I have no reason to believe that Spartans wouldn't be able to find efficient use in a katana against the Flood. Moving on to Reach, the Grenadier armor variant worn by George helped usher in one of the most efficient Flood countermeasures into the Mjolnir platform. The armor was the testing bed, or one of the testing beds, of the energy shield seen in every single piece of Spartan armor nowadays, one of the most crucial protective measures against infection forms in particular. If it wasn't for Grenadier and the other sets of Mjolnir that were used to test energy shields, then I think we would have seen a lot more infected Spartans during the war. However, the Hazop Mjolnir variant is the first armor set used by Spartans to protect them on missions that involve large biohazard threats. Of course, that includes the Flirt. Both the Reach Gen 1 and the Halo 4 Gen 2 variants involve similar countermeasures, including heightened protection against radiation and technology built to manufacture pure oxygen in toxic environments. The Gen 2 set's chest also contains a oxygen filtration system. Now, these systems provide the Spartans with safe to breathe air in environments where the air may be laden with flood spores, making it unbreathable. Hazop is very, very likely used by specialized anti-flood Spartan task forces designated with guarding flood research facilities. Some of Reach's armor attachments could also be really useful against the flood as well. The collar attachment for chest pieces is designed to protect the exposed areas of the neck, which would make it a lot harder for infection forms to, you know, do their thing, considering that they go straight for the neck. The carbon attachment also adds ventilation pipes and is able to be added to many of the helmets in Reach, including Hazop. These pipes seemingly aid in operations conducted in hazardous zones, such as flood hives, where the air might be compromised by flood spores. Okay, so now that we're moving over to Halo 4 and Halo 5's armor sets, all of these pieces of armor are built for the newer updated Gen 2 Mjolnir platform, aimed primarily at Spartan 4's and their needs in a post-human Covenant War universe. Also, something quickly worth noting is that despite the Flood's supposed defeat at the end of Halo 3, they are still absolutely a threat in the galaxy after Halo 3, hence why these armor sets that we're going to talk about actually exist in the first place. If you want to know more about that, then check out my video about what happens when a Spartan gets infected by the Flood, where we cover all of that stuff in a little bit more detail. The link is down in the description. So, the first set is Halo 4's Pioneer Armor. The helmet features a dual-locked rebreather that makes this armor set ideal for reconnaissance missions in hostile or unknown environments, primarily ones of alien origin. Now, of course, this applies really well to flood-infested environments, or blightlands as they're now called. Pioneer would be super useful for scouting out these locations and providing intel on the UNSC's best course of action in purging the blight. The other set from Halo 4 is Prefect. Now, this armor is strange because it doesn't actually have anything directly built into it to help in hazardous environments, nor has it ever been used in them to our knowledge. However, it is based directly on a suit of foreign armor that was discovered on Onyx that was used by the foreigner prefects during the end of their civilization. Now, this is really significant because at this point in time, the Flood were the most powerful that they have ever been ever in their history of existence, 
and had consumed practically everything in the galaxy, and the foreigners were doing literally anything they could even imagine to try and put a stop to it. This means that the armor Prefect is based on was very likely designed purely to combat the Flood. Therefore, we can assume that within Prefect are countless Flood countermeasures that the foreigners put in place in the original Prefect armor that carried over, both hardware and also software based. Foreign in origin, but with modifications made by Oni and the UNSC. And finally, moving over to Halo 5, we have a fair few pieces of armor, some of which are actually built directly to counter the Flood. Firstly, we have two visors, the first of which is aptly named Flood. The green Flood visor is built specifically for Spartan assessment and containment teams deployed to foreign locations that may contain the parasite, hence the name. The second visor is called Icor, a similarly colored visor designed to identify, index and inform on all matters related to biohazards. A visor that is also very likely used alongside Flood in Spartan containment fire teams when combating the Flood. Moving over to the armor sets, we have Cinder, which comes with lab grade hazmat filters and is already used by Spartan special containment teams in UNSC facilities, likely those dealing with the Flood. Based on this, we can assume that anti-flood Spartan task forces use Cinder in operations where the Flood could be a threat. The Breaker armor, although we do know next to nothing about it, is known to be used in environmentally compromised zones. Now, I'm going to assume here that environmentally compromised zones include zones compromised by biohazard threats, as in the case of the Flood. That just makes sense to me. Oni's highly classified copperhead armor, used by Olympia Vale, is equipped with interior systems that can exploit the complex terrain of human and also alien societies. Now, chances are, this armor would be pretty useful in navigating the strange overgrown terrain in Flood Hives, like what we saw during Cortana in Halo 3. As the Flood infect environments, they sort of distort them in their own image, making copperhead extremely useful for traversing these environments. Next up we have the Hellcat armor, which is a really interesting one because it was built from knowledge and materials stripped from the vault of a crashed ancient human ship that was discovered by humanity. It's based on the armor used by ancient humans during their war against the foreigners, but at the same time as this, they were also fighting the Flood, so it's likely the armor Hellcat is built on had anti-Flood countermeasures built into it, similar to Prefect that we discussed earlier. And finally, we have Reaper. Similar to Prefect, Reaper is another set of armor built from the remnants of the foreigner combat skins that were used against the Flood millennia ago. Because this makes the armor foreign to the user, its true potential is yet to be unlocked. But much like Prefect and Hellcat as well, it likely has some internal anti-Flood countermeasure that was left over from the armor that inspired it. However, whether the UNSC and Spartans know about these countermeasures and are aware of their presence is up for debate. So, that's it. Every single piece of armor from Halo 3, Halo Reach, Halo 4, and Halo 5 that is or could be used in missions that involve the Flood. I'm personally not a huge fan of the Gen 2 platform, mostly because about 95% of the armors just look awful, but I am a big fan of the increasing number of armor pieces and also visors being designed to counter the flood. I mean, it honestly makes sense given that the foreigner facilities that contain them still exist post-war and need to be guarded by something, so why not make those guards as efficient as possible in countering the flood? I want to thank all of my boys over on Patreon for supporting me, Ardent, Tomahawk, Evan, Momo, Shikata, Mjolnir, Matthew, Pierre, Tony, Jim, Zach, Jack Madden, Eric Brown, Sam Grafton, Bruin98, Hayden Woods, Gareth Davies, and Matthew Brown. Thank you very much for the support, guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.